Hello and welcome to another video with me, a Retro Tech Guy. In this week's video, we're looking at some modern software that can help you with your vintage Macintosh machines. We'll specifically be looking at how to prepare a hard drive image on your modern computer for use in your classic Macintosh. This will enable us to install content from the internet onto our classic Mac and it will bypass any installations with floppy disks. We will be using Disk Jockey here to create an image that is empty, and then we'll prepare the image in the uh, emulator Basilisk 2 on a modern machine. In my case, I'm using a Mac, but the uh, Basilisk 2 runs on Windows and Linux also. Once this is done, we can transfer the prepared image to our vintage Macintosh, either to an actual hard drive or to the blue SCSI or Pi SCSI. In a previous video, I showed how to copy the image off an actual hard drive using a bridge computer but uh, writing our prepared image is the same process in reverse. So there's a link to that video in the description. In this video, we'll be transferring our prepared image to the Pi SCSI, but I'll also talk about how to do it to the Blue SCSI. The links to the software and the hardware projects are also in the video description. So let's get on with it. So this is the nifty disk jocker with the image creator and here's the uh, custom uh, disk image size, or you can choose one of the classic um, configurations for how the uh, classic Mac came originally. Uh, but uh, we want a bigger hard drive, and so we uh, change from 20 megabytes to 2000 megabytes, which of course is two gigabytes for our SD card. And uh, then um, we see down here, we have, we can choose which SCSI ID uh, for the drive. Of course, this is important for the blue SCSI. As you can see, when I change the ID here, it changes the name of the disk image. It was HD10, now it's HD60. And uh, for blue SCSI, that's important because that's how it finds the image. But uh, for uh, raw SCSI and Pi SCSI, uh, we uh, don't need that. It's not important. Here you can see the different alternatives the different types of um, emulators or hardware projects uses different formats. And uh, here you can choose the format, but the format can also be changed manually, as we will see. We just click create the image and the image is created and saved in the downloads folder and uh, we can continue working with it from there. And here I've moved the image from the downloads folder to the desktop, and uh, now we're going to have to change the format, change the extension, because the current extension .hda is for the Pi SCSI and the um, Blue SCSI. But to work with it in Basilisk uh, 2, we need to change the extension to .dsk. So here we are in the graphical user interface in Basilisk 2. And uh, as you can see, I have my start disk there called the uh, OS753 installer parts .disk. That's my... Um, startup disk and uh, now let's add the uh, disk image that we just made and we press start the emulator and uh, of course this being an emulator it's very fast and we're into system 7.5 here that is my start disk and uh, immediately we get the prompt to initialize this disk that we made and added. We can see there that it's about two gigabytes and uh, let's give it a name and initialize it. So at this point, the drive image has the necessary drivers injected to be recognized by a classic machine but as we can see there is nothing on it now let's put something on it so i've exited out of the emulator and here we are at the um, 
graphical user interface again. And as you can see, um, I still have my start disk. We have the disk that we initialized and we have the legacy recovery disk, which is a CD image uh, of uh, loads of different operating systems that can be installed um, on classic Macs and other. And this is really a gold mine CD and it's available uh, on Macintosh uh, Garden. And the link is in the description. And so let's start it up with this. An awesome feature of Basilisk 2 that I wanted to show off here is the uh, feature of moving files and documents between your modern computer and the emulator and in that way getting them onto your uh, classic uh, hard drive images. So here we have um, the shared folder on my modern desktop and if we open it it says goodies 7.1 and these are um, programs for the classic Mac that I've uh, got from uh, Macintosh Garden on the internet and now we want to put them on our on our recently made uh, image and uh, if we open uh, the uh, Unix icon here on the desktop in the emulator we see that uh, this is actually the same so anything we put in the shared folder on the uh, modern desktop ends up in this Unix uh, folder or in the emulator. And so here we have it, the Goodies 7.1. And the Goodies 7.1 contains programs that uh, Eric Helgeson here recommends on this website, link in the description, on how to improve uh, the uh, System 7.1 with various uh, different apps. And uh, we will be installing 7.1 it's my favorite. It's a lightweight uh, system and with uh, these improvements uh, it really is great. It looks great and works great. But now to the actual installation of System 7.1 on our uh, recently made disk image. And as you can see here in this legacy um, recovery CD there are loads of um, operating systems to choose from. These are floppy disk images and uh, we will mount them all as they are necessary in the installation that we will start. In the goodies 7.1 was also the system update 3.0 but uh, we will also install it um, here straight away directly. Start the installer from the first installer disk. And uh, we have to make sure to install it on the correct uh, disk. It's not the shared Unisk disk and uh, it's not the legacy recovery disk, but it's the Macintosh HD that we made. And to customize, we have to make sure that it works on all systems as we don't know where we'll be using it and which computer. And so, system software for any Macintosh and uh, Let's install all the options, basically. Um, so we have uh, all bases covered. And uh, yeah, that's it. And uh, it installed um, successfully. Uh, let's also install that uh, system update 3.0 and let's um, install all the updates available and that's the update also installed that we can uh, tidy up here by uh, unmounting these disks and opening our hard disk image and as you can see here we have the uh, 
system installed. Now let's copy goodies 7.1 over to the hard disk image. And uh, let's also add this Collins game so we can play it on the classic Mac. So here we are in the browser-based uh, control page of the Pi SCSI. And uh, as you can see, I haven't updated my uh, interface from the old name, the raw SCSI reloaded, and you see the old uh, logo there as well. So this is my uh, Raspberry Pi then uh, with the Pi SCSI on top of it um, as a hat uh, sitting and uh, basically connecting to my home network uh, via Wi-Fi. And if we go down here, we can uh, click um, on the upload file uh, button and choose the uh, disk image and then uh, click uh, open. And since this is a large image, two gigabytes, it's gonna take a while uh, to upload. This, by the way, is another awesome feature of the Pi SCSI, the Dana port SCSI link, um, which uh, enables you to actually surf the internet with the uh, Wi-Fi or the Ethernet uh, on your Raspberry Pi. And uh, I've done that successfully on my uh, Macintosh SE30 and my Quadra 700, and it works great. So the upload was successful and uh, let's refresh the page to see it uh, listed. And there we have it and uh, let's uh, attach it. I realized though that we probably should attach it not as a SCSI ID 6 as that is the SCSI ID of the internal hard drive that is already in my computer. So let's uh, detach it and attach it as SCSI ID 5 um, instead. So this file still has the name HD60 underscore 512 underscore 2000 megabytes dot HDA. And of course, this is the special wording needed for the blue SCSI. In raw SCSI, as you can see in my list here of images, um, they can be called just anything. So we could change this name to anything we want when using it in the Pi SCSI. And uh, here, let's see it uh, start up then. So I have um, the um, Pi SCSI connected to my Quadra 700. And um, yeah, there we have the... Uh, raw SCSI um, on the bench, connect this to the Quadra 700 and uh, we'll start it up with the internal hard drive uh, of the um, Quadra 700, which is a blue SCSI actually, and um, then we'll change the uh, startup disk uh, to start it from the raw SCSI um, instead. And here you can see it actually starts up very quickly. I've got uh, System 7.1 uh, installed on the Quadra. Uh, already and uh, you see the Macintosh HD there on the uh, on the desktop uh, but uh, let's actually change it to, to to be the startup disk we'll, we'll still be seeing the icons from the Quadra 700 uh, on the desktop but uh, let's uh, let's restart it and see it um, uh, booting now from the uh, image that we uh, prepared in my modern uh, Mac and uh, as you can see, um, it's actually black and white now because it's not uh, set uh, to color uh, in this disk image. And uh, yeah, that's it. And uh, the Macintosh HD there is on top, meaning this is the boot disk. And here we have goodies 7.1 and um, uh, with all the uh, things that we can install from here then. Uh, and also uh, the columns game um, that we added if you want to add uh, more software later to your classic Mac, you can do that via the Pi SCSI using um, smaller disk images that you can make, putting them as we did in the Basilisk 2, 
and uh, uploading them to the Raspberry Pi and mounting them um, together uh, with your boot image and thereby you can get them onto your classic Mac and uh, it won't take very long to upload in the um, Pi SCSI uh, control page. So that's it for this video. Do leave your comments below and see the links in the video description. And if you've enjoyed this video, do hit that like button. If you'd like more retro computing coming your way, please consider subscribing to the channel. And thank you for watching. Bye.